Hello everybody, welcome back to White One Able Garage. Today I'm taking a break from the projects that I have lined up to give you a chance to look at this fairly new tool that's been put out by Xtool. It's called a D7. It is a scan tool, if you haven't figured out all already. But the difference is, this one does bi-directional control for under $500. Uh, at the time of this uh, video, it's $479. If you go through my video uh, link to get this tool, you get additional 10% off. The other thing that I liked about this is it does come with the three-year updates, whereas other tools such as the Alltails here, that company will give you one-year update. The other thing that's good is after the three years, if you want to do an update and keep working on newer cars that come out, it's only $99, whereas other companies charge hundreds of dollars. It comes with a one-year warranty. There is online support through an email and a phone number. And the other thing that was intriguing to me is as a do-it-yourself kind of guy with a few cars, you can send in your VIN number, make a model of your car, and the company will give you information back as to the capabilities if this tool will work for your car. I guess the main thing I wanted to show you on this tool is that for $479 you can replace both of these tools. Now I love these scanners. The 906 in the background there has been a great tool. It is by directional control, but it's $1,299. The 808 there in the center is uh, just a scanner and it's about $515 I think was the cheapest one I found on Amazon. So for the price of both those tools which are good tools, I like them. You can have this one unit for $500 and have the bi-directional control of the more expensive ones. So as you can see, as all scanners do, it comes in a good, you know, good case. Uh, the only thing I will say is, once you take this out of the case, because it does have a cable, uh, you can't put it back in the case uh, with the cable attached. So you have to disconnect it and put the cable separately. That's a, a minor inconvenience for me, and I think for most DIY guys, because you can put it down, uh, break it down, and put it in the case, because we're not in that big of a hurry. But for a busy shop, I could see where that would be a little bit of an issue. Uh, my uh, answer to that is just to put it in my, uh, I got a toolbox over there with the drawer just for my scanners, and I'll just put it in there as is. The other thing that I wish it had is some kind of a kickstand here. The uh, other companies do offer that, where you can you know, stand it up a little easier or hook it on the uh, steering wheel. This one doesn't do that for you. You just have to put it in your lap. Again, a minor inconvenience. Uh, but beyond that, I've played with the tool a little bit and like it so far. I don't use the tools here in the shop enough to give it a full review. Uh, what I do is try to give you enough information and enough capabilities to give you some interest to make a decision on your own. Now we're connected to my 2005 Corvette. We can do an auto scan. And it comes right up pretty quick, this little unit is. And I can verify that. And uh, you can go to auto diagnose. And all this kind of stuff here is available through just about every scanner. I just want to see, let you all see how fast this is. I've noticed this scanner brings up a lot of different things that other scanners won't show you like the horn and the roof body rear end there's stuff on here I've never seen before so this is really quite a complete unit it looks into everything there's, there's so many different things you can play with on this tool what I want to show you is the activation test we'll go to cooling fan because it's fairly easy to show you fairly quickly and you can see the command state is zero I'll have this highlighted down here because we're going to command it to increase Now you can see the increase on commanding and the computer is responding. So that's pretty cool that you can use this tool in the cockpit staying here nice and warm to see if the fan works or not. Now if the fans didn't work, but we saw these value change, what does that tell you? Um, the way I look at it is, it means the computer's working, it's receiving the command, the wires are intact, you just have a bad fan motor. So it aids in troubleshooting. So I'm under uh, actuation tests. 
I went to the passenger door model, front window. You can see the command state uh, none, and I can move up and down the window just from the scanner itself. So all that from the seat of the car is pretty cool. Another special function that's easy to show you here in the car is a horn. I can beep the horn and shut it off. Another special function, trunk release. It's open. You probably heard it. Now I can't close it because it's popped up. I'll do that part manually. Well, she'll write the motor. That's kind of, that should be fun. So we'll look at the windshield. I'm pushing the on button. And we, we know it works. Off. And it goes off. Off from the seat of the car. Now we're looking at interior lamps. I have beans. They work. Off. So just some examples of the bi-directional control that this tool gives you. I want to get into live data and what you have to do to get there is go through the diagnostics. Uh, I'm going to go to the system diagnostics because it seems to give me a little more uh, options here that I can control. What I want to show you is engine live data and you have to go to the module. One thing you use a lot with scanners is to monitor fuel trims so that you can uh, diagnose fuel related problems like O2 sensors and other things. So I'm going to start the car. I'm wasting away lots of live data. So watch for uh, short term or long term. Those won't start coming in until it uh, goes into closed loop. So we're starting to get some values now. But we can also, in the meantime, see where the loop status is closed. So once that becomes open, we'll start seeing these fluctuate. And we have scales over here, the millivolts in this example. Uh, the other thing we can do is if you want to highlight this, you can go to a graph format. Uh, I guess they call that a meter. One of the O2 sensors are waking up and starting to show, show that in the short term. So just an example of what we can look at in the live data. So another example of live data, a clutch switch, a clutch start switch if equipped. Mine is equipped and you can see it's released the, as the clutch is released. If I push the clutch in, it says apply. It took a little bit of time there. I'm just going to show some more live data. Just show you some of the capabilities. We have a lot of different uh, options here. I don't have automatic transmission. If I don't have that, let's see, I'm trying to find something that we can look at. There's live data for engine cooling. I notice it all goes back to the engine uh, control module, which makes sense. So we can, it does bring up the value you asked for up front. So we have our engine cool temperature outside air temperature. I got a heat on in the garage, so it's warming up. C cooling fans have just started. They're starting to rise based on the coolant temperature. Air conditioner is off, so that's incomplete. Anyway, lots of information. I won't continue with all the stuff. <laughs> just did an auto scan and no surprise there's no DTCs because she wasn't complaining anything so we don't have anything to report or clear we can go to diagnose from here and we'll start looking at things that we can do uh, with activation tests on a newer car she is a little nervous about me pushing buttons and changing things on her car so I told her I would just do a few simple things 
just enough for you and I to see what this tool is capable of without changing any parameters of her car. So we have here speed of fan. We'll have to go outside to hear it, but really don't need to. Actually, I can hear it uh, once I got up a little higher. So being able to control the fan from the seat here again is pretty convenient. We'll bring it back down to the lower value. There's one we can do without harming the car or changing the status of the car. I can hear the pump come on. This is just in the ignition. We haven't even started the car yet. The car is running now, but we can go into live data and look at some things that are available to us. If you want to see the whole list, you just scroll the touch screen. Let's see, again, let's look at something fairly simple here. I want to go to graph mode. I will say I do like the graph mode better than the gauges because the graph gives you kind of a history as it moves along. But it gives you the information. It's 8 degrees and that is uh, centigrade. We can go, and yeah, let's just bring up a few things here. So now we got those values. I just wanted to see what it looked like in the graph. Okay. I wonder if you can change that. No, it doesn't look like it. Voltage of ambient air temperature um, indicated by the V. Again, these are all things that you can do in the car, aiding in your troubleshooting. So one might ask why can't you just sit in the car and turn on the windshield or open the windows and stuff with the regular knobs? Well, we're assuming that something's broke. So if the windshield or the, the windows don't go up and down, then your switch, you know, wouldn't work, right? If you can control the computer through this machine to make the windows go up and down, you've bypassed the switch. If the computer, in fact, it receives a signal and the window goes up and down, then you know you can reduce the areas of where you're looking. For example, it could be a bad switch, but the fact that it goes up and down by the computer commanding it gives you a great indication of where, where not to look. Anyway, I'm just scrolling through this. This list is a lot more inclusive than my older car, so that's one reason I wanted to get a hold of her car to show you some of the things that are available. It's, uh, this is cranking the car, so let me shut the car off. And that should go to active once I start cranking. Yep, so that gives you a value. Position of brake pedal. Off, on value changes. So anyway, I'll stop with all that kind of stuff and uh, let's use a different scan tool now and compare its readings and its capabilities in the same car. Okay, this is the M or Maxicom from Autels MK808BT, which is Bluetooth. The kickstand doesn't really work up here, but there's a horn button here that just protrudes enough let that sit there. So that's one thing I do like is the little kickstand there. All right, the dinger's off. We'll go to diagnostics on the 808 here. We're in a Ford. Let's try automatic and see if it picks it up. It did not for some reason. Let's see. Well, let me get a VIN number. All right, we had to put the VIN number in manually. This is the same information we had with the D7. So hopefully now we can continue. So after all that, waiting for a couple minutes, for it to download it went back to the screen okay once we started the auto scan um, I will tell you it's actually pretty slow compared to the D7 that D7 moved right along this one all right starting to move now one thing I like about all tell is it shows the battery voltage of the car up in this corner and that your VCI which is the Bluetooth component into the data link connector down there it's got a little green check mark so you can see that it's reading that. I kind of like that. All right, we are 100%. We have no way of doing any activation tests with this scanner. I will say, now I paid over 500 for this scanner. They are down. I found one place on Amazon that is 479, so exactly the same cost as the D7. Here's the main difference of the tool. I have selected all door lock is off. What you have to do in this case is now go to the actual car to change the value. 
Okay, I'm pushing the brakes. So you can see the data change. I mean, that's, you know, good. Let's try under control units. I know it's, I've seen more data. Here we go. Now this does have reset features as the D7 does. Here's powertrain control module. Let's see if we can't find lab data. Look at something, engine components. Where you want to be. Yeah, now we're looking at engine stuff. So it's all here. It's just a matter of getting to it. Yeah, well that's good. Now we can probably find something. Let's graph this. And again, if you push that button, now we have a graph that uh, is available. I do like this as opposed to the meter, again, because you kind of have that history. Um, if you had, you know, oscillating or whatever, you could see what's happening uh, a little easier than the gauges. And you can hit this to expand it so you'll have a full screen. So that's kind of nice. Uh, let's see if I can remember how to get out of here. All right, so that's enough of that. Just to, there's, there's some pros and cons to every scanner. Again, the main reason uh, the D7 for the same kind of money is I think a good option Oops, is because you have the bi-directional control where on this one you just monitor it. All right I know these videos can get a little long and mine got chopped up because I was trying to cut out the ums and cut out the uh, space in between I wasn't doing anything except learning myself but uh, hopefully there's enough information there that you can make your own decision now about this tool. I don't think it's the best tool out there because the best tools are in the thousands of dollars. In fact, Snap-on's got one that's $15,000. It's also a scope. If you're a DIY guy such as myself, I can't justify that kind of money, nor would I use it enough to ever get my money back out of it. But this tool is a great one, I think, at the price point for us DIY guys if you want to um, upgrade your skill set in diagnosing these more complicated cars. There are well, now I want to say hundreds. There's dozens of modules in these cars that need to be monitored uh, so that you can make a determination of why the car is having this problem. Beyond having a scanner, you got to have access to great wire wiring diagrams, and most of those are online now, and they take a subscription as well. It's getting more complicated to work on these cars. Unless you want to just rotate tires and change out brakes and shocks, you're going to need some kind of tool. I think this is a good option because you have the bi-directional control. I uh, will put down in the description box all the information that I can get from the Amazon website so that if you have a question, look down in the description box before you ask questions on this video because basically you know what I know at this point. Uh, I don't mind hearing from any of you, especially my old uh, and loyal subscribers out there. I know this video not, might not be for you, but... You can skim through it and then say hello at the end. I always enjoy that. All right, guys, I'm rambling. I'll see you on the next video. I got uh, some things lined up I think you'll enjoy.